hard to get it perfect. You're, You're watching, watching Cheap, cheap thing, thing versus Expensive, expensive thing. thing. The show where filmmaking gear is put to the financial test. One of these flexible LED panels is $1,500, the other is under $200. But at first glance, they look about the same. Today, we'll find out, do you really need to drop a lot of cash to get a lot of light? I'm your filmmaker host, Griffin Hammond, and I am lighting this shot right now, as I often do, with two flexible LED panels. Behind me, I have three more panels that I've never tested out and I'm excited to try. One of them is over $1,500, much more than that when you add in all of its accessories. Two of these are closer to $200. So the question is, do you really have to spend a lot of money to get some decent light out of these LED panels? Today, we'll test them three ways, for brightness level, high frame rate flicker, and color. The lights I currently use are these Bicolor Westcott Flex LEDs. Bicolor means you can choose any color temperature between 2800 Kelvin up to 6000 Kelvin. That's pretty much the color spectrum between incandescent bulbs and sunlight. I really love the form factor of a Flex LED. They're so light you could just tape them to a wall and I, I like traveling with them because they're so portable. But I'm curious about this Fossaton 1x2 LED panel. It's definitely designed to look just like a Westcott Flex light. It's a good looking knockoff. And although you can't change its color temperature, it's only $170. For $1,500, Westcott only sells you the panel, which can't even turn on yet. So now we have to add an $800 controller. This is a wireless controller. I don't need it to be a wireless dimmer, but that's the only dimmer they sell for this product, $800. This can use a V-mount battery. So if I had a V-mount battery, I could use that. I don't. So I went ahead and bought the $300 AC adapter that clicks into this thing. And then you're also spending another $100 on the Scrim Gym frame, which is cool. It's, it's Velcro and the thing sticks right on. But right now I'm looking at $2,700 just to give it the same functionality as this $170 light. I'm not sure how this cheap light will perform, so I'm also bringing in another budget contender. The Falconize RX18T is only $229, and it's 50% bigger than the Fossaton panel, which could give it a leg up in this competition. For our first test, brightness level, we'll just turn these lights on and see which one is brighter. But I'll also use this little light meter app called Luxie. I have a little Luxie adapter for my old iPhone. And we'll see what Lux reading we're getting for each one. I imagine this is not as perfectly calibrated as a real light meter, but it should give us a good sense of which one is actually brighter. For each light, I'm turning it up to its max brightness and measuring Lux levels from one meter away. I'm gonna turn on this Westcott Flex Cine. Here we go, intensity, turning all the way up. We're at full intensity, 255 out of 255. And we're at 5,600 Kelvin light right now. So let's take a Lux reading here. The Westcott measures 3368 Lux. The Fossaton is 1309. Okay, that's max brightness right there. Making it 39% as bright as the Westcott. And the Falcon Eyes, which has 120 more LEDs than the Fossaton, reads 2086. So the Falcon Eyes is 62% as bright as the Westcott. What's interesting with the Westcott is I can achieve max brightness with just the white LEDs turned on. But the light also has red, green, and blue LEDs. So you'd think, couldn't I turn them all up to 100% and go even brighter? But no, it doesn't seem to work like that. There must be a finite amount of power that can flow through this thing at once. So when I turn up the intensity of one color, it turns down the others to maintain consistent brightness. In this flicker test, I just wanna find out, can I use any of these LEDs at high frame rates when I'm shooting slow motion or at really fast shutter speeds? So we're gonna crank up the camera and find out how fast we can go before these lights become a problem. 
At 240 frames per second, the Westcott looks fine. It's consistent between frames. In fact, Westcott says it's flicker-free up to 960 frames per second. So even though my camera can't capture that many frames per second, I should be able to produce flicker at really fast shutter speeds. At 1 1,000th of a second, the Westcott still looks good. I really have to push it all the way up to 1 8,000th of a second to see some flicker. But even then, it's not that dramatic. Even the two cheap LED panels are fine at 240 frames per second. If I'm not seeing flicker here, then that covers all of my slow motion needs. And just like the more expensive Westcott, they do well. I really have to push them all the way up to 8,000 shutter to introduce some moderate flicker. The Westcott Flex Cine can create any color we want to see, whereas the other two cheap LEDs are just one color. So first we'll measure what color is that, what is their color temperature, and then we'll find out if we can match the colors we're able to make with the Westcott. If we can do it with cheap gels, then that could be a really nice alternative to spending all that money. Because the Fossaton and Falconized lights are not RGBW, in fact they're not even bi-color, we're stuck with the one color temperature they put out. The Fossaton is 5000 Kelvin and the Falconize is 5600. I actually like the slightly warmer Fossaton because my skin is so pale white, I like to set my key light a little warmer than the background sunlight coming through my windows. But if you really needed to alter the color, gels can be like $2 a piece. There are color effects gels for dramatic colors, but you can also buy CTO and CTB gels which are designed to push your color temperature to exactly where you want it. If we wanted to recreate this deep blue lighting effect that we're seeing on the Westcott, this is me very, very blue. <laughs> all I need is a blue gel on one of these cheaper lights. But the issue is that a gel creates that color by blocking much of the light. We get blue, but we're three stops darker than when we started. So we're taking our already less bright cheap lights and making them even harder to use. So in our battle today between two cheap things and one expensive thing, I think I gotta give this contest to the cheap things. I mean, this price differential is huge and I love the quality I get out of Westcott. This is a really bright light with a lot of really cool features, but it's just hard for me to justify that price tag. When these two are bright enough for what I need, they don't do everything perfectly. The Falcon eyes behind me, I thought it was tinted a little bit green. The Fossatan, it's not the brightest light, but it looks pretty good. And none of them have flicker issues at high frame rates, which is one thing I like to do is shoot slow motion. And if I need some special color out of them, I mean, the Westcott has some great controls, but I can just throw a gel on one of these two. So thank you so much for watching Cheap Thing versus Expensive Thing. And thank you to everyone who suggested flexible LED panels for this show. And let me know in the comments what contests you'd like to see in the future.